Hello friends, this is your old Humphreys and I'm glad to be back with you today to share a word with you from the Bible <clears throat> under Bible Reflections. And I hope this is a word that will be good for you <clears throat> that uh, are listening. <clears throat> and it's a word that I think that we need to recognize as very important from the Bible. I believe it will be a word for you that you need today. This word is, I've entitled some things that we need to do some things we need to do and there's three things here that I want us to see that we really need to do on a on a basis built on the Word of God and that's the thing that really counts is the Word of God and this word is for you today I'm reading from the book of John the 17th chapter which it includes the actual prayer of the Lord Jesus and uh, the Bible starts off with these words these words spoke Jesus and he lifted up his eyes to heaven and he said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify your Son that your Son may glorify you. And you've given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as you've given to him. And this is life eternal that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you gave me to do. Now here's the three things I want you to see real briefly in about 10 minutes. Three things that are so important. Three things that will change your life and will glorify God and please the Lord. First is we need to glorify God. Jesus said in verse 1, Father, glorify your Son that your Son may glorify God you. And so we need to glorify God. We need to glorify Him. We need to glorify Him in America. And our country, and our dear country, has uh, a great deal of wrong that's going on. Uh, praise God, I still feel it's, it's a great nation among the nations of the earth. How God has blessed this nation and how it has been a blessing. But we need to come back to to glorify God in our nation. We need to glorify God more than we're doing in our government. You know, the Bible teaches us that the nations shall one day bow before God, all nations, and give account. So we need to recognize that we need to prepare to meet God according to the Bible. And uh, so many today in our world, out of Washington and out of other areas of uh, public service are saying there is no place for religion there's no place for God in this world and we find it and uh, and we see that the ACLU and other organizations are trying to separate God from all forms of government and the Bible teaches that God is behind all government and we need to recognize that uh, if you go to Washington DC a great number of their statutes of the great historic leaders of this nation under those statutes you'll find a scripture from the Bible many of those historic buildings in Parliament and in the Capitol and other areas along there and in Washington DC over the doors there will be a scripture from the Bible that was because our forefathers believed that this book was important in establishing a nation and we should come back to that. Glorify God. Glorify Him in America. Pray for our leaders. Pray for our president. Pray for all leaders that they will come to believe the Bible, read the Word, and love the Lord, and accept Jesus Christ as Lord. Over in the book of John, the 12th chapter, Jesus is speaking, and he, now He says something uh, like this. He said, Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? But for this cause I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And a voice from heaven came saying, I have glorified and I will glorify it again. So here's Jesus coming now closer to the cross. And he began to feel just a little bit of the weight, the darkness, the anguish, and the pain that was coming to him when he went to that cross and became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. And so it was that He felt something of this burden. And He said, Now is my soul troubled. Now what shall I say? 
shall I say, Father, deliver me? No, he said, for this cause I came to this world. That's why I'm here, to pay the price for sin of those that belong to God. And then he prayed, Lord God, glorify your name, Father. Glorify your name. Now here's something that's good. <clears throat> if you're facing a problem, someone right now facing a real problem in your life, you've been told that you have a terminal cancer, you've been told that your family is coming apart, you've been told that you're facing trouble in the court, you've been told that you're going to lose your job, many problems, many problems, many problems. What shall you do when you're in trouble? When you're in trouble, believe that this is very cause for your trouble to look to Him. God allows trouble to come to you, Christian, so that you look to Him. So in your time of trouble and trial, learn to do what Jesus did. He lifted His face and said, Father, glorify Your name. Glorify Your name in my life. Glorify Your name in my problem. Glorify Your name in my suffering. Bring it to pass and God will do it. Praise the Lord. We need to see then the importance of, of glorifying the Lord. And over in the book of Matthew, in Matthew we read a, an interesting word in the fourth chapter of Matthew. Jesus said, So let your light shine that others may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So Christian, learn to live, to walk in the light, the light of the word and the light of love. Learn to forgive, learn to look up. Learn to quit worrying and seek the face of God and the Lord will give you light and thank God for your troubles as well as all your blessings. And the light will come. Glorify the Father. Secondly, notice what Jesus said. He said that uh, you have given Jesus, you have given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as you've given him. So he said here, you've given me as a son of God power over all flesh. And he had power over flesh. He could heal the leper. He could give sight to the blind. He could save the lost. He could redeem. He had power. Power. Even over nature. And all articles of power in nature. He raised his hand in the storm on the Sea of Galilee and said, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And the storm stopped. And it was calm. Oh, he had power on this earth. But he said he had power so that he would give eternal life to as many as you have given to him. Now here's a point of deeper theology for you. And we need to think on it a moment. And that is that there is a number the Father has given to Jesus that will be saved. When he came down here to die on that cross, he loved the world, the whole world. But he didn't choose the whole world to be saved or else the world would be saved. But he chose some out of the world to be saved. And those are the ones that we must reach. I'm speaking now to some out there. Some of you will not believe. You will not believe because you are not chosen. You will not believe because you are not of his sheep. But some of you will believe because the Spirit of God is touching your heart and drawing you to Christ. And you are the one Christ died for and redeems by his blood. Oh, praise the Lord. He chooses you. The Bible says uh, we have been chosen from the very beginning to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so Christ redeems us. He said, I have given eternal life to as many as you've given him. When Christ came down here to die on that cross, he knew for whom he was dying. He knew those that he was dying for. He knew those that would believe in him. He knew you before you were born. He was God and he is God and he saves us by his grace. Praise God. Number three, it is in when he said, Now, Father, glorify me with your own glory, because I have finished the work which you gave me to do. We need to finish the work. We need to finish the race. And if we're in that race, Christians, stay with it. We need to finish it. We need to go on and keep going and keep going until we get through. Over in the book of uh, 2 Timothy, Paul, Paul, at one time in first, Second Corinthians, First Corinthians, he said, I'm not ready to go yet because I, it's not my time yet. I need to stay here and help you. But here he says in Second Timothy, the fourth chapter, writing from prison in Rome, is what he said, I am now ready to be offered, and my, uh, my uh, departure is at hand. 
I fought a good fight. I finished the course. I f kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous God, judge, will give me in that day, and will not only me, but unto all them that love his appearing. So Paul is saying here, the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. And now my work is finished. I've finished my course. And there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the righteous judge will give me in that day, not to me only, but all those out there that love his appearing, coming back. And so be ready for his coming. Be ready for his coming. Oh, thank God. Glorify, number one, glorify the Lord. Number two, find the lost and win them to Jesus, those that God has given to him. And number three, finish the race. Stay with it, Christian. Don't give up. Keep going. God's with you, and you're going to come through. In Jesus' name, call on the name of the Lord forever, and he will save you, and your sins be forgiven. In Jesus' name, amen.